Hello everyone, my name is Rich from Deep Groove Mono and this is Record Collector Confessions. What happened this week? Well, um, I won some 78s in a mail order auction. Three pre-war blues and uh, one, I guess you would call it folk, country folk. I got four Bebop 78s sitting over there that I, I, I bought on eBay and Discogs a few weeks ago. I'm waiting until I get the, uh, the 70s from the auction to clean everything and give it a listen. This will be the first time listening to new records since I have this new sort of philosophy and outlook on collecting. I, I don't know, I'm going to have to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to have to put up or shut up. and. Uh, Part of me uh, is a little nervous to listen to these records that I've bought. For sure, there's gonna be something wrong with these records in my mind. And uh, the question is, is how much will it bother me? But the funny thing is, is that in my mind, I draw this line and um, with pre-war blues, it's like, give it to me as like dirty as used as worn as crackly as distorted as it is and i will enjoy it i will keep it um for some reason it's just in my mind that it's just that fits the music with 45s too like with with, with what i collect on 45s from the 50s and 60s like rhythm and blues doo-wop um rock and roll if that stuff is like distorted and lo-fi you know, I feel like that's the aesthetic of that music and, and it works. With jazz, it, with like even bebop um, and uh, especially hard bop and you know, that stuff for some reason in my head, like I, I want that stuff to sound as good as possible. For the most part, at least into the analog tape era, the recordings are so pristine. You know what I mean? Like it's like I don't really want any compromise there. So I'll, I'll have to keep you guys posted on, on what happens with my new 78s and what I, how I feel about them and the, the, the listening experience. I actually was reading a lot about collecting as an addiction, hoarding, people who are addicted to shopping. And, you know, honestly, uh, lots of times I feel like I am a little addicted to shopping. I think I have a tendency to look for happiness in buying things. I read several articles in academic papers and um, the, they had at least one thing in common, all of them, which was that we all actually get more pleasure from the hunt and looking for things um, than we do once we actually have them. I think that's true for me. Granted, Listening to high quality playback of a record is obviously a very enjoyable and thrilling experience. If I'm really trying to quantify these things here, I mean, finding something that you've been looking for is super exciting. That's probably the most pleasurable part of collecting. Probably if I had to rank them, the second most enjoyable part of collecting is the actual playback and listening to a record that sounds awesome. Third is probably just the process of looking that is very enjoyable. Last place is probably just the, simply the act of having it and just knowing it's on your shelf or something like that. A couple days ago I had an exchange with another collector friend and it, 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 it prompted me to do all this research into like collecting addiction and shopping addiction. And that exchange with that collector kind of left me thinking about, should I just really be collecting CDs? Like maybe that's like a good, uh, that would be a good route for me. You know, uh, very low risk in terms of like emotional disappointment. Another thing that I deal with is the idea that so many other collectors are not as conflicted with collecting or they enjoy it a lot more than me. I don't really know how true that is, but you know, the way that our society is, not even just on the internet, but even like in person, socially, you know, we all are just trying to project the best versions of ourselves most of the time usually, and we don't want to let people down. And in Alan Zweig's documentary, 
uh, not, not vinyl, but the second one he did, High Curmudgeon. They talk about this. Uh, the people that he interviews in that documentary, they talk about how socially there's this like unwritten agreement that everyone is going to sort of play the game socially of like keeping it positive and not being too negative or disagreeable or anything like that. My, my whole adult life, I feel like I've been a very honest person. Um, it's gotten me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> Um, socially, you know, in all, in all areas of my life. I feel like life has the most meaning when we are very honest and sincere with each other because that leads to real genuine communication. Without emotional honesty, I feel like we aren't really communicating on as deep of a level as we can. I deal with a lot of feedback from other collectors, other people in my life. They might not flat out say it, but the sentiment feels like it's, if you like the sound of CDs so much, um, if you obsess over the imperfections of records so much, why are you even collecting records? Sometimes people's skepticism rings true with me, you know, like it did this week. You know, my, my, what my friend said to me, he didn't, I don't think he meant anything by it, but he made me kind of think like, you know, what business do I have doing this, you know? It's almost like some people who raise objections to my collecting, it's almost like they want me to stop collecting. They think I'll be happier, but I'm not really sure that's the case, you know? Although my brain wants to see things black and white, I know that's not best for me in the long run, in the end. In the end, I know that having better balance is, is, is best for me. Collecting is a struggle, but I guess what I would say is that it's a beautiful struggle. I also feel like it's a necessary struggle. As being someone who loves music, I mean, how do you completely dismiss records from your life? So it's, it's about, you know, finding a good balance. All right, well, I think that's good for this week. I'm gonna sign off and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.